That's pretty faithful. Right? Still doing the work. So my job, if it's more needful for me to be here than to be God, would be if this is you, to shape you and the and as uh, the, the potter on the wheel, and he makes it another vessel. And is he concerned with the outside or the inside? It's the inside. And so uh, I have had people, not lately, they don't ask me anymore, why are these rocks here? Why are those rocks? Those, those, by the way, what kind of rock is that? Limestone. That's called limestone. Well, what, what the size is that? What, what do they like, do? They give that a number. Four. Those are fours. I know uh, you can order fifty sevens, which are fine. This is when they lay it down to get the trucks in and the bulldozer in to get started on construction. That's the start of the construction. They lay limestone. It's not slag. Slag gives off a gas. Limestone does not give off a gas. Whenever they would dump the slag out here, oh, the gas! It was awful. Why are those stones there? They're in the church. I mean, people would walk in. What, what's that crack of black guy? Rocks in it. There's an illustration. Yeah, what's the illustration? Stop throwing rocks. Yeah, you know what? When you stop doing that, the moment you stop throwing rocks, I'll get them out of here. <laughs> So it's a pretty good idea to leave them there, I think. The minute you stop, when I stop hearing rocks get thrown at people here, that'll be the day that I'll pull them out of here. So I, uh, we went, we got saved, we left the Roman Catholic Church, we went to this little tiny church, and we went from the fire, right in, uh, from the Friday, right into the fire. And we were there for a few months, and uh, one guy, uh, one couple got divorced. One guy, ended, he ended up being a captain. I was telling Joe about it. He ends up being a captain in Lake Michigan on a, starts his own charter boat. One, one of the kids married a Roman Catholic priest. Another kid became a priest. Uh, uh, the elders, elder resigned be, uh, he resigned, another elder resigned, oh, all because of sin. And when we were in another, we never heard about this stuff, but we didn't even know anybody. We just went to church there, we didn't know anybody. And the only time we ever knew anybody is when we were, uh, because of, we were in the school, and we knew the other parents. Well, anyway, this little church, uh, turns out the preacher was charismatic. A close closet charismatic, you say, now, Gary, how am I going to convince these farmers to go, yeah, but yeah, but speak in tongues and get these gifts of the Holy Spirit and all that. Well, there, they had a meeting in the basement. I've told this story here. They had this meeting. I, I, I was, I wanted to be, I wanted to be involved. I had God saved. I, I wanted to be involved in everything. They would ask, well, uh, at the Presbyterian Church, they said, what are you doing here? They were wondering, they, there was an elders meeting. Well, they announced it, well, I showed up. And they said, well, what are you doing here? And I said, well, there, you announced the meeting. I was, I just showed, I showed up for everything. Well, anyway, this little church, they had, they, we, we were in the basement of the church, and they sat around this thing, and, and I knew everybody there. In fact, people had come there after we had come. And the pastor, he was the nicest teddy bear, nicest guy. And he went down the road and he said, he said to this individual, he said, your special gift is this. He went to the next guy. It was all men. There was no women there. Went to the next guy. And they were having a meeting, too, about speaking in tongues. And they said to the one guy, who was going to do this, I mean, somebody outside the church how to speak in tongues. He said, well, where's the interpreter? And the guy said, well, I do my own interpretation. And I mean, you can figure where that one's going. One guy challenged it right away. Well, if you're doing your own interpretation, how do you know what's what? 
So anyway, he went down the road. This is your special gift. This is your gift. Whatever the gift was. You know, being kind, whatever. Your gift is this. Your gift, there must have been eight of us. Your gift is this. Your gift, nine or ten of us. Your gift is this. And he went down, right on down the road. I was last in line. Your gift is this, and your gift is this. He came to me, and the meeting was over. The meeting was over. And they dispersed, and I think we went to service. And this, there was a service, and the meeting was over. And I got him after, I said, Pastor, well, oh, what's my gift? And he said, well, when I figure that out, I'll let you know. I, I'm not kidding you. When I, when I figure out what your gift is, I, I'll let you know. And I thought I would, I felt really hurt and left out, you know. But when I added it all up, in the path that all these men took, and the little bit I, I did know, I can't think of one that wasn't a shipwreck. It ended in a shipwreck. A mess. And, and I thought, man. Like I said, we went from the Friday, Friday and into the fire. So we're going to go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians 6, verse 9. So I want to read to you before we get there, there are nine gifts of the Spirit that are given, I think, in 1 Corinthians 12. The complementary chapter and verse for that is Romans 12. It's easy to remember because it's all the same chapter. 1 Corinthians 12, we preach none of those gifts are active today. They're all over. But Romans 12, those spiritual gifts are still added. And it, it says when Jesus departed, he took captivity captive. And it says he gave gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto them. Now we preach that there's seven of these gifts. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given us as Romans 12. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. That is not predicting the future because that uh, we have the entire future given here. It would be uh, being able to interpret what this what this book says about the future to come. Or ministry, and when you name off these things, they're kind of vague. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. So these things differ, and not everybody, you can have more than one gift, but everybody's got at least one. Or he that exhorteth, exhortation would be somebody that is an encourager on exhortation, to encourage one another. He that giveth, let it do it with simplicity. If you're a giver, you're not going to announce it and blow a trumpet. Here I'm giving, you know, and do it with simplicity. He that ruleth, now I would say that would be me. It says with diligence. And so other people aren't as diligent as me in, in ruling. I'm the kind of guy that, well, I make sure that the doors are locked. And you could be that way, a deacon. You know, when you think of, uh, I remember one guy said, this is the job of the deacon. He makes sure the heat is off, the building is shut down, he opens up the building, closes up the church, and so on. But with diligence, still, you know, he keeps his finger in the dance. With diligence, he's very diligent. He that showeth mercy, a person that is merciful with cheerfulness. Extending mercy to somebody, not, not grudgingly, but cheerfully. Let love be, let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, that's seven. Then it goes on to say all these other things. Let love be without dissimulation. And we looked up that word. With, it's, it, it's not supposed to be fake. You know, I love you, even though I really hate you. 
-hmm. It can't be fake. Abhor that which is evil, cling to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. I mean, this applies to everybody. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful of business. Fervent spirit, serving the Lord. The things that serve the Lord. And so on and so forth. I remember one time I read to a friend about a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, lover, a lover of good men, so we're just holy temperate, and holy fast people were this he had been taught. And his response to me was, that's for you. Because it was in reference to the pre preacher, a lover of hospitality. But it says here, distributing to the necessity of saints, it says, given to hospitality. That, that applies to everyone. So, our topic today, and let's get preaching on, is work. Work. Doing the work of God. God made man from the dust of the ground. And man makes God from the dust of the ground. So if I try to weed things out of your life, it's more meaningful for me to be here in the flesh. You know, I, I'm not here so much to make friends. I said, yes, last week I said, I'm not your friend. I'm your, let's say, your father. I'm not your buddy. So man, God made man from the dust of the ground, but, but men make God, or gods, from the dust of the ground, such as the Cleveland Browns. The World Cup, I mean, give it up. Et cetera, et cetera. You know, we can pick on that. So I tried to, let's cast this out of here out of this little saint here, mold and shape this from the ins inside, you know, that there would be love and joy. Uh, are you at war with anybody? That there would be peace. Peace in your home. And that, that's when you're really growing. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Oh, put up with this long nothing. That's what long-suffering is. So, I read all those off. <coughs> those are gifts that people are given that they're supposed to work at and do. But our verse that we'll use today is Galatians 6, verse 9. You're, hopefully you're there. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And we do get weary of well-doing. Many finish their lives. Father, bless now the preaching that it would truly take effect. Uh, for I'm not going to be here forever. In Christ's name and for his sake. Hey! Many finish their lives but do not finish their work. Whatever that work may be. Oh, do I have left the job half done? How sad. It is like salvation. You know, salvation was just a half done job. The cross. See, when he said it, when Jesus said it is finished, he did his part. But the job was half done. Oh, to have left that job that's half done, how sad. Like salvation, Christ's job, his work was to buy us. That was his work. Our job, our work, was to believe. That's our part. I would love for you to get started on the right foot and get saved. Get saved. For the lost, their strength. Uh, I told this to somebody this week. Their strength is to sit still. To sit still. 
for the lost, you just you just sit still. You sit still and God did the work on the cross. Just sit still. Everything will work out all right. Just sit still. Not to participate in Christ's work. For he died on the cross for you. Just sit still. Christ says, as if the work is already done. He says, as if the work was already done, the work of the cross. I have glorified thee on the, on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. He says that in his great prayer. And then comes our work. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. What could be more easy? Just believe. <coughs> believe. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. And sad to say, Many finish their lives. They finish their lives, but do not finish their work. They don't believe. For oh, so true, be not deceived, God is not meant mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If a man soweth disbelief, his disbelief his disbelieves, he, he, let me say it how I wrote it. If a man soweth disbelief, he disbelieves himself right into hell. But not so you. You sat still while Christ was. Then believe your way, that is, believe the way to heaven. For Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oh, but men get weary in well-doing, if only it could be said that men get weary in evil-doing. You know, after you're saved, now you can get busy, we've been given now these gifts. I, Christ gave gifts unto men when he departed, and you've received a gift. <clears throat> If only men would get weary in evil doing. Such as this, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. You know, if you don't know what to say, it's best what? Keep it a modest shut. Yeah. You understand the letter? He got understand the letter. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Job writes, O oh, that my words were now written, O oh, that they were printed in a book. And the books were opened. And one is the book of remembrance. You know, that's a, it's a good book. It's a good book because it records all the, all the things you said about Jesus one to another and how you were crazy and how you were just thankful and so on. But I included this with all these As your words are, such will be your sentence. Are you weary in well-doing? Yet men seem not weary in evil-doing. This weariness comes not from the regenerated part of a Christian, but from the fleshly part, such as when Peter began to sink, when he began to sink in the water, such sinking wasn't from the faith in him, but the fear in him. Work, working for God, is well-doing, like building a tower. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he hath sufficient to finish it? Well-doing, what is this going to cost? If you're going to do well-doing for the Lord, what will it cost? My enemies speak against me. That's what it will cost you. They'll speak against you. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. 
Here's another cost. We are troubled on every side. But it's like a good soldier. We are going to endure a hardness. If we suffer, if we suffer, we shall reign. I uh, I brought this up uh, on Wednesday prayer. I had to, something happen to me Wednesday prayer. Now, folks in the church, and anybody that's saved or in the church, I don't mean just this church, outside the church. Very few, if anybody, has spoke to me about Channel 8. But those people that I know outside the church that I, I have no idea whether they go to church or not have all said they saw me on Channel 8. So is it only Christians don't watch Channel 8? I don't know. And only non-Christians watch Channel 8? Well, this week, I, I mean, I received a blessing. I went and delivered a, a job. I hadn't been there for two, two or three months. And it was two or three months ago that the ads ran. And I walked in, the, and the guy says, the, the, uh, the shipper, the shipping receipt, said, oh, I saw you on TV. I, I saw that. I saw you. I said, I know that guy. And I, yeah, I saw the ad that he had. Well, I wanted to talk to the front office. So I went into the front office because I wanted to raise my price from 40 years ago. So we finally raised the price, and I went in the office, and the woman up there said, I saw you on TV. I hadn't seen them since those ads were on. People did see it. <coughs> and they didn't throw eggs at my car. <laughs> but they did see it. It's only the Christians that, apparently, no Christians watch Channel 8. <laughs> See, I'm talking about people outside of, uh, outside of our church. But those that are outside of our church, and I don't know a lot of people that I meet, but those that I met said they saw me. If you're going to work for Jesus, sailor, as a sailor, you meet with storms. Or as a soldier, you meet with bullets. Or as a fighter, you meet with blows. Yet a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Our Lord told us, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Are those just words? The world in which we live, this world. Christ said, in the world ye shall have tribulation. Such trials and tribulations verify our calling. You know, it's, it's like heading into the wind and you have to face the headwinds. As Paul writes, I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. If you labor during the heat of the day, then be patient. Your reward will taste all the sweeter at the end of your labors. Now you think you can't go on one more step. Go on for him. Oh, the pleasant words can then be said, it is finished. What does he say to those that he welcomes in? He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That is when Christ entered into glory. It was the glory of the church at Thyatira. I know thy works of charity and service and faith and thy patience. And I works in the last to be more than the first. You know, we did have, you know, we don't have a phone here now, but we did get a call on the ad, and one, one call came in, and they said, you could have spent that more money more wisely than putting it on in those ads. They wanted us to, I think they wanted us to go buy food for the poor. I think that's what they wanted. And where does our work take us? I will walk at liberty. Just where the Spirit of the Lord is, or where the Spirit of the Lord is liberty. It encourages us to hold fast our profession. 
for there are those that do not. Demas is one, one who has loved this present world. Israel is another, for they have cast off the thing that is good, the Bible says. Many have turned after vain jangling. They at one time ran well, but have turned to another gospel. You did run well, and who did hinder you? you know, people, oh, we got people, they get on this online business, man, it, it twists them up like a pretzel. Now there is an appointment. It is appointed unto man once to die. All men will finish their life. But not all men will finish their work. Intending to build a tower, are you? Intending, wishing, like a wishbone easily broken. The world has a dream, a tower to build. Yet like the Tower of Babel, it will be a monumentous failure. <clears throat> so I ask you to count the cost. Men would desire to be Christian, yet only at a cheap rate. I know people all too well. They, they check the pricing. They, they, you know, I, I see people, you know, I, 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 they, they look, the first thing they do, they look at their receipt. I, I, I never do that. Maybe I'm wrong. And my response to that is, what did they do, rob you? I know you order the McDonald's and you never get the order you get before. I know that, but I never look. Men would desire to be Christian yet only at a cheap rate. They are not willing to count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Unwilling to count all things but dumb that I may win Christ. And it was the day I walked out of there and I, I closed the door and I said, God, it's your place to do with it what you want. Are you just a half a Christian? Half a Christian is the Tower of Babel at best. Are you lukewarm, kind of half in and half out? I'm here to tell you, you make God sick. And how do I know that? Because God says so. Work. God's work. Giving up, you want to do God's work? Giving up our sins. Our self-righteousness, our ease, and our worldliness. Count it the cost, I say. Count the cost. Sinlessness, to be sinless, sinlessness costs something. Sinfulness costs more. Amen. Either way, there's a cost. Work. Oh, there's tons of verses we could have used for these things. But what does God say? It is your reasonable service. That is presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice. The Christian walk is the work that you do. Is it darkened by a cloud? Does a cloud hang over it? Well, look close at the cloud. That is the great cloud of witnesses that has gone on before us who have finished their course. So let us run the race which is set before us.
for us. Our work is but a light affliction, the Bible calls it, and it is but for a moment for our reward which awaits us as a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You want a great reward? Who here doesn't? Then work the works of God wherein ye have been called. For there are diversities of gifts which are administered by the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Working here is the law of sowing. When you work, the law of sowing. You know, the last two, even on Thanksgiving Day, I hired their men to plant 2,600 balls. <laughs> One person, in all seriousness, said to me, what do you need so many light bulbs for? <laughs> I said, no, they're not light bulbs. They're, they're uh, tulips, daffodils, uh, irises, uh, crocuses. You know how many holes that is? <laughs> Work here is the law of sowing. But once in heaven will come the law of reaping. So don't expect to reap while the corn is still green. The corn is still green. Has it tasseled? You know, we used to plant corn and the, the, the I call it tassels, it's tassels. The tassels come out. The flower. And when you, you know, I don't know, somebody, the other day somebody said, well, I said, everything's got a flower. How do you think you get acorns? So the tassels come out and boy, you can smell that sweet corn. Now, there's no corn in there yet, but the tassels are out, so the bees are busy, and they're fertilizing it, and the corn... Uh, how many, by the way, how many years do you get per stock? Anybody know? You plant one seed. How many years come out off that stock? Nobody knows. Six. Three. Three come off of there. Yeah. So don't expect to reap while the corn is still green. As a tassel, then let it fertilize so it may produce fruit. <clears throat> so as uh, you get older in the Lord, and here we have Evie. And there's her baby. People may say, what a waste of time. You know, they're killing these babies. They're killing them. They say, what a waste of time. Oh my goodness. They're just storing up more fuel from the fire if they don't get saved. You know, when there was a day when the baby stopped crying in our house, that was a sad day for us. And you know, we, we took the crib down and said, well, there'll be no more babies here. Now we have grandchildren. But we, I, my wife and I remember that. The crib came down and, and Nathan was done in the crib and no more babies. And let it fertilize as the tassel so it may produce fruit. So let us not be weary in well doing. <coughs> Look, see the clouds of God's anger on a sinful church. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Just. It is just an 11 day journey from Horeb unto Kadesh Benera. 11 days. Yeah, we're going to wander for 40 years. Remember the words of Christ Surely I come quickly. The Christian looks out and says, Hi, there's a lion. There's a lion in the way. You know, if there's a lion in the way, then rest assured you're on the right way. A lion, is it the devil? 
the roaring lion, then resist the devil that he may flee from me. Remember your life is but a vapor. Look, if the lion wasn't in the way, it makes the reward, if you want gold, how do you get gold? You've got to dig for it. It takes work. Your life is but a vapor. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, it is what? Sin. We're on our last page. Lord, this is a verse, perfect that which is lacking. All of us here have something lacking. And Paul writes, perfect that which is lacking. Increase my faith, for faith gives the substance of things not seen. Work. I remember I drew a picture. Uh, I don't know if it was a village. One time I did a Hollywood set to show behind the scenes. It's all fake. Ah! There's the wall, but behind it's just YouTube and first bracing it up. If you watch a whole, just watch a movie. When they slam the door, you see the whole wall. <laughs> Those cheaper films. And what I have in the window, help wanted. Work requires workers. There are, there are workers in the world. I looked it up. And how many times it occurs in the Bible? Not many times. There are workers of iniquity. There are workers with familiar spirits. There are deceitful workers. There are evil workers. And there are those who work at the abomination. But those that are God's are workers together with Him, in which God worketh to will and to do of His good pleasure. For the Lord working with them. Is this the sermon we need? I began with salvation. Right? Doing the work of God that you believe. If you're lost, you need that. If you're saved, you need to get busy. And you may be very tired. You may be very tired. Remember that chap that was in the mountains, still guarding his boat. 20 years after the bad. Warren Hardy does a movie about that where Stan is in the trenches for 20 years. Is this the sermon we need? And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. For many finish their lives. But do not finish their work. Best regards. Shake hands before leaving.